Storing magic cards in a binder might seem simple, but many people make big mistakes that cost them hundreds of dollars in damaged cards. You don't want this to happen to your collection, so pay attention. Take a look at this clip from Rudy at Alpha Investments. This looks like a near mint beta Ankh of Mishra, an $800 card. But oh no, what's that? Major damage done from the ring of the binder. This one ding on this card could easily cost this person $1 to $200 as their near mint card is now downgraded to a light play or moderately played card. The owner of this Ankh of Mishra was trying to do it right. They clearly cared for this card for decades. They kept this card in sleeves and in binders. But that binder betrayed them. Binder betrayal. This damage is done by a three ring binder, something many of us have used, myself included. But these O-rings, they can be your downfall. Any misalignment when you're closing your binder can create problems. You get pressure from the O-ring onto your cards, and since metal is stronger than cardboard, the card loses every single time thus creating the crease that changes the shape of your card. It's also possible that your sleeves will start to slip out of the O-rings, which can create more misalignment. This happened several times while I was filming this video. Binder betrayal. So how do you fix this? Let's go on an adventure and find out. Ooh, Legos. No, don't get distracted, stay focused. D-ring binders, exactly what I was looking for. Unfortunately, they didn't have the other item I was looking for, so I just freaking gave up. No, we must persevere and drive across town to Target where I know I've seen this item before. But when I get to the collectible section, they don't have it either. What's going on? Is this a conspiracy? Turns out they recently stopped offering this item in stores. Luckily, Amazon can save us. We'll get to this mystery item later on. We went with the D-ring binder because having this flat side in your ring is key to preventing your sleeves from stacking and folding over and getting caught up, which will create those creases in your cards. This is a great step in the right direction. Just make sure that you are using high quality sleeves like BCW or Ultra Pros. Cheap generic sleeves will rip right here in the seams and ruin your day. Binder betrayal. If you use a binder with loose sleeves, please use high quality sleeves. They cost more up front, but like most things in life, if you go with the cheapest option, it costs you more in the long run. But even if you get a D-ring binder with high quality sleeves, you have another problem. Gravity. Cards can easily fall out of their spot in the sleeves. Binder betrayal. This is even more likely to happen if you put multiple copies of a card in one slot of a sleeve, which will stretch the sleeve. I know it looks convenient to do this, but it comes with a cost. Side loading sleeves can help quite a bit with this. It dramatically decreases the chances of the card sliding out of your binder. A D-ring binder with high quality side loading sleeves can be a great option for your collection binders that mostly stay home and you don't transport very often. But they can be cumbersome in your backpack that you're taking weekly to your LGS. For your trade binder, you're better off going with an actual binder made for trading cards with the sleeves built in. Remember the mystery item from earlier? It's the card guard card folio. This will keep your cards nice and secure. The sleeves are built into the spine like a book, leaving no chance for ring damage. They come with side loaders, so you can be confident that as you're pulling your binder up and down in and out of your backpack, they won't be sliding out of the top of your sleeves. You could be headbanging to your favorite metal music and still not lose your cards. You know, for when you're taking your trade binder to metal concerts like normal people. No binder is perfect, and one downside with side loaders is that you can potentially try to load it from the wrong side and end up bending and denting your card. Binder betrayal. This might seem like something only an idiot would do, but we can all be idiots sometimes. The sleeves don't always open from the same side, so make sure to take your time, don't get too distracted while talking to friends, and insert your cards the right way. Your patience will be rewarded. No matter which binder solution you go with, always sleeve your cards before putting them in your binder. This might seem like overkill, but I promise you, it's not. You don't want to be taking your bare cards in and out of your binder with your greasy little fingers. You know when you're playing a match of magic, but you get distracted by all the gunk that's built up on your sleeves? That gunk comes from your hands, and you don't want that on your bare cards. And even if you always wash your hands like a surgeon before you handle your cards, others don't. Trade binders get passed around and someone eating their lunch will pause, wipe their hands on their pants, accomplishing nothing other than having both dirty hands and dirty pants, then grab your binder and take out cards they're interested in, thus transferring all their gunk and grease onto your bare cards. Binder betrayal. All this grease damage can be avoided by immediately sleeving your cards into perfect fits before putting them in your binder. All of these tips will help protect your valuable collection and save you hundreds or thousands of dollars over years of collecting. You gotta protect your cards, especially if you're crazy enough to build the world's most expensive burn deck like I did in this video. Check it out now.